All right. I picked up these paints while I was in Germany. Haradra McRoyal is a wonderful uh, line of paints from Schmincke. Top row of the paints in here are ones that came with the box. The bottom row are ones that I selected myself to add to the collection. What I'm doing now is rearranging those paints in an order that works for me. I prefer to rearrange my paints in sort of a rainbow order. Uh, not everyone does this in their boxes, but it's kind of what works best for how I remember where to find my paints. Um, what I'm doing now is arranging them in rows of 10 for the uh, swatching paper, which has uh, rows of 10 boxes for swatching. Um, I've got my warm tones on top, my cold tones on the bottom, roughly. Um, I'm mixing some of my neutrals in, or rather tacking them on the end with my cools. And the last two at the bottom are Payne's Gray and Ivory Black. So when you open your pan, you always want to check to make sure that the product number is visible. Coincidentally, on the first one, it was not printed well, so I wrote it on. Added that on there. Um, now you're going to see I am setting them all to the side, back into the box, so that I can label my squares. Each one is going to be labeled with the name of the color and then the product number. Uh, each brand has its own numbering system but I find it's useful to use that brand's numbering system in order to make it easy to remember which paints are which. Um, I decided to switch to using a Micron pen nib uh, pen for my labeling because the Sharpie I was using before was bleeding into the paper too much. Now that I've got them all written out, I can start swatching. Um, I'm using Plain water, the first color I've got here is Brilliant Red Violet. Um, this was a really lovely shade of very warm violet. It washes out into a very, very pale, pale pink almost. Um, the next color is Magenta. This is a true magenta, um, although I found that it was a lot more red than I was expecting. Once it is uh, thinned out with water, though, you do get those magenta tones that I was um, was expecting to see. Next is Permanent Carmine, which is a color I've never used before. I was very excited about it, and as you'll see in a moment, it is a really bright shade. As I go, I match the number on the pan to the number on my swatch. And you saw that right at the beginning there. And this shade is so bright that it's actually kind of hard for my camera to really capture it well. You'll see later on when it's dried, it's a little bit easier to see, but it almost like blinds the camera. It doesn't really pick it up as well as it could. Next up is Matter Red Dark Shade. Matter is a natural pigment, but I don't know whether or not Schmincke uses the uh, natural pigments or a... Uh, a synthetic version of that color. This color washed out into the water really quickly. It's a soup, it's a much richer color than I anticipated. Matter is also a staining color, so it's one that um, is going to be harder to pick back up off the paper. Here I'm showing you the warning for cadmium red. Cadmium is a heavy metal paint. Um, it is common in some uh, colors. You'll see it in reds and yellows mainly. Um, it is also an opaque color, so uh, it is going to be hard to glaze, but it is great for uh, creating really, really intense colors. Next up is Indian Yellow. It's also a new color for me. Indian Yellow is semi-opaque, and it is a very rich, warm yellow. Um, I am really excited to work with this one, especially for botanicals. I find that this is going to be a great color for florals. Um, although I'm also excited to see how this works in um, more of my animal paintings. Next up is another cadmium color. Um, cadmium, as I mentioned, is a heavy metal. So a lot of painters don't like to work with cadmium paints. I find that I like to keep them on hand because when I need them... Um, 
it's really good to have them. I don't use them very much because I tend to prefer to paint with transparent watercolors rather than opaques. Um, but they are, as you can see, a really rich color, um, really intense pigment. Just make sure you don't drink your paint water. <laughs> this right here is lemon yellow. Lemon yellow is actually the color that I find that I use most often in my paintings. It is a really useful mixing color. Um, I have the same color in Daniel Smith paints. Um, it is the color I go to most in that pan. It is also the color I go to most in my Winsor Newton pans. Next color is a fun new one that I've been looking forward to getting. This is transparent green gold. It is a green toned yellow that is actually very similar to a yellow ochre, a light shade, but it is very transparent, whereas ochre is a, um, a opaque color. Uh, when this washes out into lighter tones, you get this almost glowing gold. It's really great for botanicals, so I'm looking forward to playing with that. Next up is May Green, which is almost like a, a neon or grass green. It is another semi-opaque color. It washes out, though, into some really nice pale uh, kind of yellow greens, so I find that's one probably going to be very useful for botanicals again. Next up is uh, the permanent green olive. This was actually a less olive tone than I expected. I found that it matched more to the uh, Winsor Newton hooker green. That's kind of what it looked like to me. I don't know if Schmincke does a hooker green, but um, that's really what this looked like to me. Um, I was a little bit surprised by the color, but I find that's still going to be a really useful color to me because I do use that hooker green in my Winsor Newton palette quite a lot. Next up is Thalo Green. Thalo shades are just such rich blue-green shades. I'm really excited to have this one in my palette. I think I have a Thalo Turquoise from Daniel Smith that's very similar to this one. Um, but this one I found looks like it might even be even more pigmented. Um, this, I actually, you'll notice I have to go back in <laughs> and push the color back because it was sort of taking over my swatch. This one here is Cobalt Turquoise. Cobalt is another heavy metal paint, another opaque paint. Um, this turquoise, though, is really true to that gemstone turquoise, so I'm excited to have it in my palette. It actually was surprisingly um, surprisingly fine paint and really blended out into some nice light tones. Here we got Prussian Blue. Prussian Blue is not a light fast pigment. It's a beautiful shade of blue, but this is one that I probably won't be using in most of my paintings. Um, I, if I do, I'll need to make sure I use a UV resistant coating to protect my paintings. This one will lose its color pretty quickly under, uh, under normal light conditions. Next up is ultramarine. Um, ultramarine is kind of your basic necessary blue in any palette. Um, this one was really beautiful. I'm excited to see how it compares to the Winsor Newton and Daniel Smith ultramarines that I already have. I find that ultramarine is pretty similar across brands, but this is the finest ultramarine that Schmincke has to offer. It is very low granulation, which um, I'm looking forward to seeing how that how that holds up. Here we have manganese violet. This is actually a much more red violet than I anticipated. Uh, I expected a much more cool manganese violet. This one turned out to be very, very warm. Uh, and somewhat granulating. The granulation I did expect from manganese, but um, as I said, a lot warmer than I anticipated. I might end up moving this one to a different spot in my palette because I find that it's actually even warmer than the uh, brilliant red violet that was my first swatch. Next up is perylene violet. This is a new color for me. If I had known it was so red, I probably would not have put it in this spot in my lineup. I'll probably be rearranging my palette to make up for that. It's also super intensely pigmented. I had a really hard time washing this one out into such a small swatch. 
and you'll notice that I end up overworking my color a little bit and trying to because it just it wanted to be so intense and it, the pigments really stuck together they didn't move very much they really wanted to be where they they came in my poking that one there was because I was goofing around and noticed that the uh the paint stone that was in there had gotten loose and was wobbling around. This is the sepia brown. Sepia brown is a really great one for painting for colors. So I'm looking forward to having that one in my palette. Next is English Venetian red. This is an opaque uh, red earth color. Another one that's going to be very useful for uh, both flora and fauna. As you can see, it is a little more granulating though. So it's one that I'm going to have to work around that with. Here is uh, yellow ochre. I mentioned yellow ochre earlier when I was talking about the transparent green gold. You'll notice some similarity to that one, but this one is opaque. It does, however, wash out pretty nicely, but as you'll notice, even in the more diluted colors, it does stay fairly opaque. It really wants to be an opaque color. Last two here are Ivory Black and Schmincke's Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray is one that I find that is different in every brand because Payne's Gray is really a mix of ultramarine and um, burnt sienna. You'll end up with slightly different ratios in every single brand. That's why I like to have Payne's Gray in every palette. This one um, was much more neutral gray. Um, I was actually pretty pleased with that. Lastly is Ivory Black. Ivory Black is pretty similar between brands, but you get slightly different granulation depending on the maker. So I like to try that one and kind of figure out which ones I like. I don't use Ivory Black a whole lot. I tend to prefer using Payne's Gray at this point in my painting, but it's always good to have a true black for accents. I like to use this in animal eyes or in small spots in botanicals. Here I'm kind of poking around at which ones I might want to move in my palette. Thanks for joining me.